Well, the SEC Media Day is up and rolling in the ATL. And no, the eyes are not on Nick Saban, but more so Commissioner Greg Sankey. Given the vote of confidence with all the reshaping and realignment we're seeing so far in college sports moving forward along with their conference, Texas and Oklahoma heading that way in a few years. In the commissioner's words, the SEC is looking like a super league in the future. When I walk through the recitation, this is a super league. So as I visited um, with our presidents and chancellors and ADs, I understand the timing is this news broke June 30. I did not gather that group until the next Wednesday. Uh, I wanted to make sure I learned what was actually happening. But also, I didn't want a story like on Friday, the day after, or oh, the SEC presidents are gathering, and then you have this ripple effect of they're going to do something. Um, and so we wanted to be patient and wanted to communicate. Um, I, I, again, we're comfortable at 16. There's no sense of urgency, no sense of panic. We're not just shooting uh, for a number of affiliations that make us better. Could they be out there? I would never say they're not. I would never say that we will. Um, we're going to be um, evaluating the landscape. I'm not going to speculate. And I actually am watching a lot of this activity operating around us more so than impacting us directly. A little flexing there from the commission of the SEC and why not taking a look at the odds to win the SEC title. Hey, Alabama, uh, no secret here, the favorites at minus 140, but the defending champs right behind him at plus 140. Then you have, speaking of Nick Saban, his best buddy, Jimbo Fisher. And Texas A&M at 16 to 1. And then you see Tennessee, Ole Miss, and Kentucky at 40 to 1. And speaking of the Rebels, oh, Lane Kiffin, we got to hear from the Lane train his thoughts on how to address the NIL. Hmm. I think ideally, if we're going to be in an NIL world and somehow you're going to do it right and it's going to get capped, you know, so that there's some way of controlling it and keeping playing fields close to the same. Um, otherwise, you're just going to have these glaring differences within Division One football um, based off of their, what I've said before, their salary cap. I know that's not really the right word. Uh, and ideally, I would think that the coach should be part of managing that. That's, you know, how you would want it done. But I don't know if it'll be that way or whatever. So that's just how I would do. And that's based off of look what happens in professional sports. There's salary caps and the coach and the general manager slash owner manage that. The other thing about that Hold too on. is if it's not, I would say, okay, well, why would you put it that way when coaches aren't supposed to be involved in that? Well, you got a whole other set of problems. If you got boosters out there deciding who they're going to pay to come play and the coach isn't involved in it, how's that work? I mean, they could just go pick who they want and pay them however much and then are they going to tell you the boost is going to tell you who to play to and then when they don't play how's that going to work out so again this was not thought out at all in my opinion and has created a massive set of issues um, which I think most when people really thought about it from a coach's standpoint could have predicted this um, was going to happen. We sure isn't hanging out with Pete Prisco on the beach before media day. Mm -hmm. Nice tan. Happy Nick Saban Day, folks. The Alabama head coach takes to the podium today. We've got our boots on the ground checking in with us. What to expect? SEC Media Days continuing from Atlanta. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.